Ladies and gentlemen, David Brower. It's really important in life to appreciate others as we want to be appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, David Brower. Yeah, you see, it's just like you were coming up onto the stage here. Did you feel that? And that's how if you start appreciating people like that, you'll start appreciating you like that. Isn't that cool? So today I wanted to come up and, and share a little bit about my version of a lifefulness that I call, which is, you know, loving life fully, deeply, a lot of emotion, kind of getting beyond the head into a flow state with people and using everyday life. So I got an app for you. Are you ready for this new app? Do you like free apps? Do you like free apps? Yeah. So this app is called Reciation. It's called Appreciation. App Reciation. <laughs> so my life is really about helping people appreciate more their experience of life. I think we have such a richness and a wealth and abundance that's around us and within us and between us in particular. But if we can focus on that and become masters at that, that becomes the core of our existence. We become the meaning maker, the perspective maker of what we actually go through in life. And we don't have to have an experience and react to it like everyone else does. We can really choose to react in a completely different way. And it's all about appreciating more. And appreciating is something that goes way beyond an intellectual way of perceiving the world. It's how we use our senses to open up to the world, which for me translates a lot to an emotional thing, an energetic exchange. And I do experiences that involve lots of live performance artists and interactivity with people and, and gorgeous foods because I want to get people to refocus on the basics of every life, the interactions and moments where we are actually with people or we're eating. Three times a day we're eating and we're sharing this potentially with other people and we've kind of fallen a little bit into hedonic adaptation. You heard this term before probably, a lot of you? So it's like becoming jaded uh, for things that we've kind of just cataloged in our life. And so I really, I guess, kind of woke up to this when I came to France and realized, first of all, I wasn't really eating very tasty food. <laughs> the bread sucked where I grew up. My mom was vegetarian. I'm eating tofu burgers, uh, which would be great if she knew how to cook, but she don't know how to cook the same spices in the cabinet for 20 years, mom. <laughs> So, and then next thing I know, mom, you know, mom dies of a lung cancer at 74, which is like the average age to, to die of that. And she was doing headstands just before that and, you know, was, was really loving life. But she had a bit of a struggle in our family and some of the relationships, emotional. And I realized in that period where the last three weeks were there, that the core of life is really this expansion and healing of appreciating those that are around us, our family members, our loved ones, our friends, and focusing our life there. And that's what I do with my life. I focus on the people around me. I focus on how I nourish myself and how I share that with other people and how I gather people around tables that are insanely tasty and not like mom, right? <laughs> Because it elevates people's appreciation. You know, you go to a fancy like three-star restaurant, you're way more attentive than when you're, you know, going to a fast food place, for example. At least I hope so. And so this is really a way to raise the quality of your life is to focus more on appreciating things. What I really mean by this is, you know, with food, of course, you can start to choose things differently if you're actually really in the present moment when you are eating and enjoying something. And it's just like with you're with somebody, right? If you're really with the person and you can get out of multitasking your brain and the phone's coming out and all this stuff. And this is tough stuff for us today. I'll tell you, we're all so addicted, right? So it's really a practice of if you start to lean on your senses, 
So I look at people and I try and notice something really amazing. You know, I love your hair. So it's just like, wow, it's like electrifying. You know, or someone's eyes or the way they're dressed, the way they hold themselves, their voice, you know, their demeanor, their energy, to kind of externalize that to people and share that expression onto other people. And you will see that this will also come back to you. What you're giving out is going to start to come back to you. And you suddenly start to notice the really beautiful things in people. You start to notice in every kind of person the beautiful things. And then this boss that's the total jerk, you start to notice that this is kind of comical. You know, this guy's a real ass. <laughs> and you're saying, you know, God, you'd step back like two, three degrees, and you're like, I'm starting to appreciate this. This guy is comical. How can he be such a, you know, and you start to say, well, actually appreciating this is noticing that, observing that, not just suffering and, you know, letting it kind of take you over, noticing, acknowledging it, and realizing that maybe that can be fuel for you to try and look for a new job. Maybe you're going to learn how to deal with really difficult people. So you take a different perspective when you start to have more appreciation. Same with food. I mean, if you start to realize you're eating something, you realize you don't really eat that well because you start to notice it more. You're starting to look and you're starting to then start to choose better at the restaurants and you're starting to actually enjoy the food more. And then you're starting to enhance and enrich your life and you're making the better choices. You're no longer going to the restaurant looking next door and saying, oh my God, that looks so good. Why didn't I order that? <laughs> you know, people start to say, oh, what are you ordering? You know, they start to, you know, oh, why don't you choose the restaurant? Right? And you become like this master appreciator of life. And I'm telling you, the quality of your life, the joy in your life. And the same thing with people. You know, as you start to you know, meet somebody, like tonight, you see, you meet somebody really extraordinary. The key in meeting someone extraordinary is first of all, noticing it, recognizing, feeling something, right? You're like, wow, there's something there. But then after tonight, follow up. <laughs> Tenacious, generous, follow up. Snapchat. Snapchat if you need to. <laughs> Facebook, whatever it is. You know, to be able to, to connect, uh, it's one of the things I consider myself quite, you know, quite good at uh, is this follow-up phase and cultivating relationships, especially when I want this person in my life, right? I don't know. Maybe they don't know the, yet the value of that for them. Uh, but for me, you know, I'm like, I want this person in my life. And we start pursuing. I mean, there were stories earlier about someone wanting somebody in their life, which was really great. You know, this kind of thing. <laughs> so this appreciation is actually you giving generously to others. Uh, so again, with the food, sensorial experience, first step of self-love, appreciating what you're putting in. As you start to appreciate flavors and things, you raise the quality of your life right away. If you're sharing that with people, you're raising their quality of life together. And suddenly it's like a keystone habit to raise the way that you're experiencing the world. And you'll see that you will start noticing for the other things that are happening in your life, uh, the things that you choose to, to do on, on holiday, uh, the uh, types of, you know, it could be even the types of clothes you buy. I mean, suddenly you start to realize you're becoming a bit more of a discerning person. There's all these things about raise your standards or, you know, uh, I think really in a free way, just by already observing more, you start to get to know yourself more and especially as you start to really share that with other people, this is when the real connection starts to starts to happen again. You know, instead of just going to a restaurant and saying, wow, you know, I, I like what we're eating. I mean, let's try and go to another level here. The <laughs> texture, the temperature, this, the juicy covering, that, that flavoring that has that Japanese-Korean, you know, fusion to it. Uh, the crispiness reminds me of when we were in Tokyo together eating tempura and we looked in each other's eyes. And, you know, so and there's like, there's all these things that you start to use your imagination on. And it actually starts to stimulate your creativity and you start to fight against this quicksand of hedonic adaptation, which is pulling us back to living this normal life. You, you want to live a normal life? Like, a, you know, this is what everything's pulling us in this direction. And while we can wait for somebody else to bring this into our life, and this often happens, you'll meet somebody maybe who has a higher 
level of something, and they start to uh, run out of time while they're talking. <laughs> so does this make sense to, to everybody? So I got one challenge for all of you. So before the evening is done, either alone or with somebody, to take your phone and take a picture or do a little video and send to somebody that you either want to spend more time with or that you love, a little daring thing. Send them a little video message if you can. Say I'm that inspired. And we're so inspired by all the people who have come here and I just, I want to spend more time with you. I love you. Just like a compliment. So who doesn't like to get compliments? I mean, Mother Teresa, and I'll finish on this, said something beautiful. She said, uh, the world has more need for love and appreciation than it does for bread, except in France. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good evening. <laughs>